Hey there, I'm Jake Reynolds, Head of Emerging Technology here at NetSpy, and I wanted to take 10 minutes to give you a really quick demo of our attack surface management platform. I always like to say ASM satisfies two key criteria for our customers. The first is discovering and continuous monitoring of the unknown portions of your attack surface, whether it's SSL and TLS certificates that have expired, open ports you weren't aware of, domains or IP ranges that are hanging around from old subsidiaries or data centers or initiatives that you may not have been aware of as well as discovering vulnerabilities on that unknown portion of your attack surface and the known portion of your attack surface. We strive to only alert you when we discover an immediately exploitable and critical vulnerability and give you access to all the other data to make informed decisions of your attack surface when you need to. Uh, I always like to start with talking a little bit about the data hierarchy and how we categorize data in ASM. If you look on the navigation bar here on the left-hand side, you'll see we have assets and exposures. Those are the two buckets that we like to put data into. I'll click in here into assets and you'll see exactly what you expect uh, when you think about network assets, domains, and IP addresses, the start of any uh, good attack path or exploit chain. Uh, you'll also see cloud accounts and ASNs. Cloud accounts will integrate into AWS and Azure and pull in ephemeral domain names and IP addresses from those accounts, as well as ASNs will pull from regional internet registries, RN, et cetera, to identify any IP ranges that are um, owned or leased by your organization or your subsidiaries. So we can see some really cool trending information in here. I can see even some of the relational information. So for example, I can see out of 300 domains, um, there's six IPs that are related directly to those domains, or there's 157 ports open on these domains, or three vulnerabilities right open on the, the domains. 60 of them are live, 300 of them are monitored, which means we're scanning them continuously. 60 of them have some amount of open ports. If I click in here to domains, you'll see what is my favorite view. Uh, I call it the explore page. It gives you a really nice way to see the different criteria that we gather um, on domains and be able to filter through them. The most exciting one that I, I always look at is subdomains. Uh, every organization is a unique place and they have unique naming schemes and standards. So when we start getting all the information, we can look at what are the common subdomains that they use for staging or dev or QA. And we can apply those to all of the domains in the organization through subdomain brute forcing and see if any of them are available or hidden. And, you know, not referenced anywhere else that, that would only be able to be found with this level of intelligence. You can also see geolocation, the services that are available, technologies and products that are open. And if I click in here to one into, we'll look at netspy.com, good old prod.com, we can see some more of that information. DNS records, uh, subdomain and vulnerability histories, the technologies in use, related IPs, certificates with my favorite uh, supported protocols and ciphers. Uh, as well as the ports, right? Everything always goes back to the ports, um, more or less, when it comes to vulnerabilities. On the right-hand side, you can see some of the cursor information or metadata, if you will, that we also gather. We'll dive into that a little bit further down the stack as we get um, more data available to us. And then screenshots, right? Visual identification is very important, both in pen testing to look for familiar uh, management interfaces, uh, as well as when looking through the data to see what, what looks like, you know, in this case, a netspy.com website. I know that's a netspy.com website. What doesn't look like a netspy.com website and would be interesting for me to investigate? Similarly, for IP addresses, uh, that same amount of information is available with additional things like reverse DNS or pointer records. You can see the geolocation here, as well as some, some nice additional information like, is the IP uh, pingable? Does it respond to ping? Uh, as well as this case, it was discovered through cloud integration. So we integrated into AWS, this IP address was leased to us through AWS's global um, IP pool. We automatically pull it in, and when it's no longer associated with that cloud account, it gets sent back uh, and is no longer scanned, but the, the history is maintained inside of, of ASM. I'll also show ASNs, because I think they're pretty cool. You can see here that NetSpy has three IP ranges that are allocated to us through various regional internet registries. Uh, this is a really nice way that whenever uh, a new range is leased by somebody in your organization, automatically gets pulled in. Sometimes it surprises you, and. You know, a lot of times we have to work with clients because they don't, they don't think IPs are theirs or domains are theirs. And when we get to kind of the root of it, they, they find out that is, that is theirs, they weren't aware of it, and it's, it's a really good way to keep them uh, aware of, of changes inside of their attack surface. And then, like I mentioned, cloud accounts, um, they are credentialed integrations. In the case of AWS, it's an assume role um, kind of uh, API integration. As well as for Azure, we use an app registration with credentials to get read-only permissions into those environments and query them for various criteria to pull in that information into ASM. Now the fun part, right? Exposures. If we go down and look at exposures, we'll see all the information we've gathered on these assets, the most important of which being ports, as well as certificates, DNS records, technologies in use, and um, the other most important alongside ports, which would be vulnerabilities. I want to start with ports because aside from a very you know, small subset of vulnerabilities, almost everything 
flows back to ports. So we invest a, a massive amount of time and research into being able to properly identify and fingerprint ports so we can put the proper scanners and, and checks in place when we see something of concern available. You'll see the similar explore page available as there was on the domain page. And you can automatically see, oh, 22 SSH ports are open. That's obviously an issue that we want to investigate. Or we can go down and look at the management port specifically, ports that are flagged as being typical for exposing management functionality, in this case, SSH uh, and RPC bind. Really nice ways to look at this data. And then if you pull um, any of these websites up, you'll see a lot of that cursory information available as well, and a lot of really unique metadata, page title, content length, different types of hashes, um, the JARM, which is looking at the, the handshake, the SSL and TLS handshake between the client and server to be able to identify common configurations. Uh, and then service type, all, all that good stuff. If we scroll down here, we'll actually see the discovery chain, which helps us identify how did we go from A to Z. You know, we, we get the question a lot, how did you find this? How, how did we get here? In this case, it's a very simple discovery chain. Eric Gruber, our director of ASM, put in this domain manually. And then through port scanning, we discovered port 443, right? Very simple. As we get further and further down the chain, you'll get more and more nodes in this tree, as well as some kind of circular references or multiple paths to get from A to Z that are important to know about if you're trying to close off um, access to a certain place or the, uh, the ability uh, to find something on your tax surface. Like I mentioned earlier, screenshots are extremely important in pen testing and just you know um, assessing your attack surface because you can usually easily identify, oh, I've, I know this website, I've seen it a thousand times, and this website seems to be an outlier, I want to look at it. So to, to aid in that, we do something called perceptual hashing. So you can click here and group by perception, and that'll group all the screenshots by the way they look, right? It's not a bit by bit um, hash, so that it takes a lot of that noise and helps you in this case take 14 screenshots and turn them into one because they all return the same thing. This is something our pen testing team does so that when they review these, they're looking for um, actual data and not just looking through duplicate screenshots, as well as when you, if you want to look through the screenshots, it's nice to be able to group them, have a much smaller set of information and really look for those outliers that might be unique opportunities for pen testing or further security review. I'll hop over here to, excuse me, I'll hop over here to vulnerabilities, which are, are you know, where all the, the fun stuff comes out. So we see quite a few vulnerabilities here and I'll go ahead and Click into SQL injection, for example. If you've ever received a penetration test from NetSpy, you're very uh, familiar with the quality uh, that we deliver with our ports. There's no exception there for attack service management. Uh, human verifies every vulnerability that comes through. The descriptions, mediation instructions, and verifications are all high quality and handwritten for that vulnerability. If you look down, you'll see the verification instructions include those HTTP, uh, HTTP requests and responses that you would want, as well as any other detailed instructions so that you and your team can properly uh, triage them as, as needed. And you'll see over here the status. When it comes time for mediation testing, you can click on the status, say it's ready for retest, and that automatically alerts our team, lets them know to, to look at the vulnerability, see if it's remediated, and you'll get an email immediately when they are completed, telling you the results of that remediation testing and if there are any further steps that are needed. Uh, additionally, we have a lot of other really fun information, like I said, products, DNS records, SSL, TLS certificates. Uh, I'll save the fun of diving in for those for when we can get on a call uh, and chat in real time. A um, couple other things that I, I would love to highlight will be our API. Our API is fully available. Everything you can do in the, the user interface and more is available. Uh, so if you do want to integrate in any systems or pull down data in any unique ways that aren't available, uh, you have access to all the entities and the ability to search, update, delete, uh, whatever you would like for those. Uh, I'll go back one step for, for anybody that's like me that looks at a computer screen all day. Uh, we do support dark mode. Um, that sometimes ends up being my favorite feature because it, it, makes it makes it nice being in the platform for, for eight hours a day sometimes. And then the last thing I'd, I'd like to highlight will be our integrations. We integrate with a variety of platforms. Um, Jira, ServiceNow, any ticketing platforms, a large amount of uh, SIM and SOAR platforms, as well as anything that, that really supports uh, an HTTP uh, API. So, Really appreciate you taking the time to, to look at ASM today. Uh, there's a lot more features that we didn't have time to dive through in this demo, uh, but I hope we get the chance to chat in the future and I appreciate your time. Thank you.